crashing down And we're building back up again now I see your heart, see your mind, see all you hide I won't let you go, can't let you stay When you lose yourself, I'll be right beside you I see your heart, see your mind, see all you hide I won't let you go, can't let you stay When you lose yourself, I'll be right beside you I am back with Final Countdown this time. Apparently, I like Jank. Uh, so, Final Countdown, for those that don't know, is extremely hard to play in this format. It's easier to play in Modern, and it's at 1 in Modern. But, I digress. This deck is solely for fun. It won't win anything. It's too fragile to win anything. If you don't see Countdown by turn 5, you lose. It, at, at that point, your stall cards become useless. But, this is my build. I wanted to have some fun, so I built Final Countdown, and this is my build. So, start off with, we have two Spirit Reaper. Uh, the one line that says, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Good card. You don't ever resolve its hand rip effect, because all you do is sit on it in defense position. Uh, Sangan to search either Spirit Reaper. Uh, both of the jars. This says, dig for... Traps or Spirit Reaper potentially, or Sangan to search the Spirit Reapers potentially. And then Morphing Jar, you just set all of your stall traps and then go plus three to five. Uh, that's all of the monsters. There's not a lot, obviously. Uh, three final countdown. This is the worst card in the deck, but it's the win con. So you have to run it, and you might as well run it at three while it's at three. Uh, because again, if you don't see this by turn five, the game is basically over. Uh, you pay 2,000, and you wait 20 turns. It's very, very stupid. Uh, and you just get to watch as your opponent dies on the inside from having to lose to this deck specifically. Uh, but we have to draw cards. So, one pot, one charity, two upstart goblin. Pot draws you two, charity draws you three. Upstart is free. You're playing a 38-card deck, basically, because upstart's free. Uh, good for getting to Countdown, good for getting to all of your Battle Traps. Uh, 2DD Capsule. I'm very iffy on this card. I don't like it personally because it doesn't do anything. It's Gold Sark for those that play more modern. Um, but you banish a card face down and you have to wait two turns for your standby and it blows itself up and you get the card back. Uh, but if it does not blow itself up or if it's removed from the field before then, the card just stays banished. So. It's okay. It's not my personal favorite card, but at the same time, sometimes you need to get to Reaper and you won't see Sangan, or sometimes you just want to protect all of your stall cards, so you throw away something like Book of Moon, or you throw away something that's going to be dead, like another copy of Countdown, and your opponent blows it up and has wasted one of their spell trap removals on a dead card uh, when they could have done it on any one of your battle traps. Uh, but two of that, because three is too much and one's too little. Uh, Swords are really light. It says your opponent can't attack for three turns. That's three turns on countdown, or three turns to get to countdown. Uh, two Book of Moon. You'll notice there are a lot of traps in this deck. Uh, this is actually not for outing Jinzo. Uh, if, if your opponent resolves a Jinzo and it sticks on the board, you might as well scoop. Uh, but... The way that this works specifically is, fun, is um, Book of Moon is basically just another stall card. You book one of their cards, they don't attack. So it's not really for outing Jinzo, uh, unlike my last turn build where I said it was solely for outing Jinzo. Uh, this is definitely much more, it plays a stall card role, so you actually have one, two, three, four, five, you have a lot of stall cards. Uh, two level limit, this says level four or higher can't attack because they're all switched to defense position, and it's really funny if you play this on a Berserk Gorilla, because it just dies, and then they never play another one. Uh, 
Yeah, that's all the spells. It's a bunch of draw, final countdown, install, and on to the best part about this deck. So we have three Wabaku, uh, because Wabaku is trainable, and it says you take no battle damage. So if you don't have a card that says your opponent doesn't get a battle phase, or your opponent activates Heavy Storm, you chain this and you get another turn. Uh, same with Threatening Roar. Threatening Roar basically says you can have a battle phase, but you don't need, but you're not going to use it. Um, stall card. Uh, Thunder of Ruler. I actually, when I first built this, I did not know that this was in GOAT format, and I am an idiot. Uh, but you activate it during your opponent's standby phase, which makes it arguably the worst of the three. Uh, there is no battle phase, so your opponent can't even enter battle phase, which is very stupid if you chain something like Frozen Soul to it. Uh, three negate attack, it's a counter trap that ends the battle phase. It's a counter trap that ends the battle phase. What what else is the best card? The only problem is it has to survive to battle phase. It's mirror force, but better, in a way. Depending on what you want. Uh, two Frozen Soul, the only reason this is a 2 instead of 3 is because your opponent has to have 2,000 more life points than you do. And yes, we have Double Upstart Goblin, but you're not always going to see Double Upstart Goblin Frozen Soul. Uh, but Final Countdown says you pay 2,000, so if you don't see Countdown, this card's dead for the first couple of turns. But it skips your opponent's next battle phase. Uh, so if they don't go into battle phase on that turn, that's not their next battle phase. Uh, that happened twice while I was playing it, and it was funny to witness. Uh, two Gravity Bind, this is the same as Level Limit, but in a trap card. It just says they can't attack, which is always fun. Two Fake Trap, I would love to run this at three, but you need stall cards, so I run two of it. Uh, it protects from heavy, since a bunch of this deck is trap cards. Over 50% of this deck is trap cards. You're going to need to protect your traps. Uh, and speaking of protecting traps, three solemn judgment. Uh, judgment is fantastic. Again, so long as our life points don't hit zero, we don't really care how much how many life points we're paying. So if you want to if you want to count down and then um, judgment, that's fine. I'm not playing wall in this deck because wall is just as wall makes this deck I think more fragile than it could be because we're already running Final Countdown, which is not the best deck. Uh, so I think if you pay 3,000 for wall after countdowning, you're, you've paid 5,000 life points to stop 3,000, which is fine until your opponent outs the wall. Uh, and if you don't have any battle traps or judgments to stop that, then you just lose the game. So I elect not to run wall because I think wall would be... Wall is situational. like. Part of me wants it in the deck, but then part of me knows it's not going to be good in the deck because it's another magnet, and if everything goes wrong, I don't have a fallback. Uh, but if everything goes wrong in this deck, you're probably losing anyways. So yeah, this this is the jank final countdown build. Uh, again, thanks to Jinzo and Tonic for letting me do another video. It's, it's very fun to do these and watch my opponents squirm. Uh, but sometimes I am the one squirming, and it's very, very obvious with this deck that if everything goes wrong or if you don't have the right answers, like if you only have battle traps and your opponent chains like Mobius or Heavy and you're down to one card, it's just bad. But it's a very fun deck, and if it goes off, it... I don't know. It makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. I don't know about everybody else, but it'll definitely make your opponents hate you for a solid week. <laughs> Uh, so again, thanks to Jinzo and Tonic for letting me do this, and that's all.